Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for Lightroom, we're going to be taking a look at how we can remove color casts from images. So as you can see from this image that we've got on screen in front of us, we've got a very blue overcast looking image. So we're going to take a look at how we can quickly adjust that and how we can apply that to multiple images quickly and easily. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. So we're in the develop module in Lightroom and if we take a look on the right hand side you can see we've got the basics panel open and the first option we have available is the white balance option and as we can see at the moment it's telling us that the white balance is set as it was shot which in this instance it was shot through the window of a boat so that's actually influenced the color of the shot and given us this blue cast. So what we can do is we can expand that and we can choose any of the presets that would come in your camera, including auto, to try to automatically correct any color issues that are inside this image. We can try that to start off with and see how close that gets. And you can see it improves it, but it's still not quite right. So what we can do is we can go down to the temp and the tint, in other words, the temperature and the tint of the actual image itself. And we can adjust those to compensate for any colors that are inside the image. So at the moment, we've got a slight blue tint. And if we compensate for that by taking that over towards the yellow, you can see that will reduce the amount of blue that's being cast overall in the image. But we still have a slight magenta cast to it. So if we take the tint and take that over towards the green, you can see we kind of neutralize those colors and get as closer to where we want to be, closer to a natural kind of color. So there's the first step. We've corrected the basics of the color problem. So the next thing we can do now is we can quickly go through and make some edits to improve the overall tonality of the image, give us a little bit of boosting color, give us some more contrast, and just make the image look considerably better. So let's take a look at that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to work our way down through the basic panel and then move on to some of the other options that are available to us. So at the moment, the image still looks a little flat, even though the color has been corrected. So what we can do is we can adjust the exposure to give us a little bit more light in there. We can pump up the contrast to give us much sort of stronger edges to the actual image itself. And then we can use the normal tonal adjustments to adjust the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. And we can also improve the clarity, which it's like contrast, but, well, let's just adjust it and you'll see exactly what happens with the image. You can see what it does is it finds the edges of the tone and it'll give you a much better contrast, but only in those edges. It'll compare the dark and the light points, whereas contrast actually works globally. The clarity is a little bit more selective in what it does. So you can see that we can use that to give us some real punch to the image, some real depth to it. We're also lacking a little bit of color, so let's just bring some of that back in by using the vibrance and we can use saturation to just give us some overall color bump now down in this sort of foreground where we've got the water and the boat you can see it's a little dark so there's a couple of ways we could work with that we can check out using the shadows so we can bring out any lost detail in the shadow area we can also adjust the blacks to compensate and we can adjust the whites to bring a little bit more punch to those. And the same with the highlights. Obviously, the thing we need to make sure of is that we don't blow those highlights. So if we hold the Alt key down on the keyboard and we use the sliders, any highlights that would be clipped would be seen in the same way that any shadows that would be clipped would show up with the slider. So we can see we're OK with this image. So let's adjust those to where we want. Just to give that a little bit more clarity to it. Okay, so there's some of the basics we've done. Let's move on now to take a look at the next panel. So what we have next is the tone curve, which works in a very similar fashion to the curves that you'd be used to if you use Photoshop or any kind of image editing application. So this will show us the histogram in the background of the tone of the image. So you can see everything over to the left hand side of the dark areas within the image, anything over to the right hand side of the lighter areas of the image. We can adjust these to adjust the clipping point and we can adjust any of the sliders within this. So we can see that we can adjust highlights. We can adjust the lights. And the same with the darks and the shadows. So 
And with a little bit of adjustment, you can bring some life back into the image quite easily. We can even change the type of point curve that we're working with, but we won't worry about that. We'll look at that another day. The next option allows us to change the hue, saturation, and lightness of the different colors in the image. So for example, where we've got these orangey red or the terracotta kind of colors in the walls, what we can do is if we want to make those look a little bit more saturated, we can choose the saturation option and we can adjust the various colors. So for example, we can adjust the oranges and the reds to give that some more punch. And you can see this is bringing out the color in the wall. If you want to adjust the luminance to sort of really have fine control over this, you can do that. So you can see adjusting the orange has quite a dramatic effect on the overall image because there's quite a lot of orange and reds in those building walls. So you can see we're bringing out details that we didn't look like they were there. So if we just sort of disable that a second, there's before, there's after. So you can see we, we can really sort of bring out colors in the image quite easily. Let's just pull that back a little bit. That's just a little bit too much for me. And the same with the, the blues. We can sort of come into that and we can say, well, let's just adjust the tones that we've got in there. As you can see, the sky, the water, everything's been affected there by adjusting the saturation. If we wanted to, we want to shift the colors of this. We can easily do that. We can come into the blues and we can adjust those. So you can see that we can sort of take the the blue over towards the green slider scale and all the blues in the image are really being affected and giving a sort of a turquoise kind of color. You, know, you can go a little bit crazy with this. But you know, these options are there to fine tune the image to exactly what you want. Uh, we can use the saturation again. Let's bring those oranges and reds back down a little bit. They're a bit too much for me. So we can quickly adjust that. If you want to come down and sharpen the image or deal with any noise in there. So at this point, you look at this, there's not a lot of noise. But if you zoom in, we take a look at the sky. You can see we do have some gray in there. Nothing too too bad. But what we can do is we can use the noise reduction and we can adjust luminance. Or we can adjust color, color noise. And you see, once we let go of this, the sky will smooth out slightly. Now, obviously, there's going to be detrimental effect to other parts of the image, and you'll see that we're sort of starting to get a bit of a painterly effect to some of the tones in there. But, you know, for this example, it's not too bad. With the sharpening, we can control the sharpness of the image. And again, if we use the Alt key on the keyboard when we adjust these sliders, we can see exactly what it is we're going to edit. So if I want to see what parts of this are going to start to sharpen, what I can do is I can come to the masking, I can hold the Alt key down, and as I adjust this, we'll start to see the parts of the image that will be adjusted by sharpening. So if we don't want to affect the noise that's in the sky by sharpening, we can just use the masking on there until we get the sky. It's predominantly black, so that won't be affected. So these white edges are what will be sharpened. The black won't be touched. So we can let go of that. And we can start to bring the sharpness up. We should start to see the detail in these areas being affected, but the sky should remain pretty clean. There we go. Now you may not see this brilliantly on screen because it doesn't necessarily translate brilliantly, but I'd recommend taking a look, try it yourself, and you'll see what this will do. Okay, so that's basically all I want to do to this picture. So if we just bring this back up to where it was originally, bring the panel up from the left-hand side, we'll scroll down to where this was opened up, and we'll see that's the original image. And that's what we end up with. Quite considerable difference. I definitely uh, think you'll agree with that. Okay, so that's how we can correct color balance issues and how we can correct a picture that is tonally not particularly good. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or any other videos on our channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and we try to comment and reply to every question you ask. Until next time, take care.